Good day. We carry on in Vesper. This is the PowerPoint. It looks at three electron pairs. The parent shape for three electron pairs is trigonal planar. That gives us and yikes. That gives us a nice angle between them. I don't know if you can make this out. But here we have boron. One, two, three pairs of electrons around it. There's no octet, so boron is a violator. The chlorines, in that case, all have an octet, and we our example we said is BF3. So it looked much like this. There's our boron. There's our F. And there's our F. And there's our F. And I'm not going to put the octets around. You should do that. You should put in the eight electrons around. I'm interested in the bonds here. So boron is satisfied when it has three bonds. So no lone pair anything <laughs> left over here. So that's why it's called AX3. Well, the best separation, if we do that, is we want to have the maximum. This Lewis structure is misleading because it looks like 90 degrees here, 90 here, and 180. And in fact, it's evenly spread out, so it's going to have 120 degrees between. So 120 there, 120 there, and 120 there. And so if I was drawing it as a structural diagram, I would do something like this. I'd go B to an F, and then I go to another F, and I'd go to another F. And that's how you're supposed to show that it's planar. Planar means it's flat, like lying on a table. And trigonal means we'd enclose it with a triangle with 120 degrees between each. Now, next one, we replace an atom with a lone pair. And the lone pair will actually force things from being linear. So our parent shape was trigonal planar, but now we end up with it being bent. So SO2 is a resonance structure, something we'll get into later. It's a very interesting beastie. And what it looks like as a Lewis structure is that we have a double bond on one side of the sulfur. And then we have a single bond on the other side. This oxygen now has eight electrons around of it, four in form of lone pairs and four involved in bonds. Whereas this oxygen will just have a regular octet of three lone pairs and one bonding. These things are supposed to be our dots. Hard to draw with this PowerPoint. And then the sulfur ends up with lone pairs. We don't care about double bond. All we do is AX2 means on this side, here's one atom. Here's another atom on the other side. That's the X2. So SO2. And then there's one lone pair. We only care about lone pairs in the central atom. And this lone pair pushes things, pushes these bonds down. So it approaches. So it's going to approach 120 degrees. So that's representing a lone pair that is, instead of allowing it to be linear, has made it a bent structure. So hopefully that is making some sense. And that's a space-filled diagram showing the bent structure. That would be the sulfur and two oxygens.